Welcome back everyone to Season 2, Episode 5 of the 3K Challenge. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, make sure you check those out. For those in the loop, let's get to it. It's been a little touch and go so far this season. In the first two weeks, I wheeled TQQ and toyed with GameStop and Bed Bath & Beyond, which netted me about $470 of games. I used this premium to buy shares of GameStop and QYLG and held the rest in cash. But in weeks 3 and 4, I gambled on GameStop wheels and lost, which pretty much wiped out all the gains from the previous two weeks. Entering week 5, I'm right back to where I started. This isn't what I had in mind, but it's the painful lesson I learned for trying to turn meme stocks into an investment strategy. Although I'm about ready to move on from GameStop at this point, I'm taking one more pass at it this week. And that's because on Wednesday, GameStop is going to post its quarterly earnings. This is a binary event that will increase volatility and give me one more shot at unloading these bags. Earnings expectations are pretty bad. The market's expecting GameStop to lose money, and of course I believe the same. I expect that they won't even talk about their NFT platform because it was such a flop. And since the new console cycle is long past, revenue is probably dropping too. The Wall Street mean loss estimate is 38 cents per share, and the whisper number, that's the number circulating among rich people, is 44 cents per share. This would make it one of the worst quarters for GameStop, but this is also a really low bar. When the market expects losses of 38 cents per share and fancy brokers expect even worse, then losing anything less can actually be a very good thing. So let's crack open Robinhood here on Monday, September 5th. As you can see, I'm pretty much flat for the challenge so far on account of these heavy GameStop bags. The stock is down 10% on the week, 36% on the month. If it weren't for earnings possibly turning the ship around, I'd probably have given up already. But after getting back to these lows, I think the stock might have another gasp of life left in it. Let's trade earnings by opening up the options chain. I'll flip to this Friday, September 9th. And remember, I got assigned shares at $33. That's 27% out of the money. The only reason there's any premium at all on this strike is because of earnings. I'm going to sell the $33 strike this week for coincidentally $33, but I must keep in mind that after earnings, unless the stock moons, I will have to make a difficult decision to either cut sling load or sell covered calls below my basis, because my assigned strike will be way too high to continue wheeling. But I'm going to submit this order now, selling one covered call at the $33 strike on GameStop for $33 in premium, expiring this Friday. Like I said, earnings expectations are pitiful. So let's wait for earnings on Wednesday and see if GameStop can at least hurdle this really low bar. Okay, let's time hop now to Wednesday. The market is about to close and unfortunately GameStop just took another 10% leg down over the last two days, at one point losing 6.5% just today. That's a 20% loss over the last five trading days and 40% this month. This stock really needs some good earnings to right the boat. I'm looking at the Yahoo Finance comment section to see if anyone has a link to the earnings announcement, but Yahoo comments is just bots shilling scams to other bots, so I'll probably find this on Wall Street Bets instead. All right, now with the market closed, I'll patiently wait for the report. All of my ETF holdings did great today. GameStop is the only laggard. Here's to hoping for some good news. A few minutes have gone by, and according to Tiggs on Discord, the GameStop report has been out for a few minutes already, and we're all dumbasses for not seeing it. I'll click on his helpful link, and here's today's report. Sales are down about 50 million compared to last year, but sales of collectibles are up about 50 million, so that's a bigger slice of the pie. GameStop's transitioning into a thrift shop. Costs are down over 14% since they closed a bunch of stores, and inventory is up over 140 million worth. GameStop is trying to put a positive spin on this by saying they're prepared for supply chain issues, but when your sales are down and your inventory is up, that just means that you have more stuff on your shelves because people aren't buying it. I'm pretty skeptical of their explanation in this case of inventory as an asset. I think it sounds more like a liability. Here's one note down the bottom on the NFT platform that just says that we launched one. They don't mention revenues here, but we know that they aren't very strong. But GameStop does have negligible debt, which they're very proud of. Digging in a little more, we get our key numbers. So here's EPS, that's earnings per share. Although they lost much more than last year, this quarter's loss is 36 cents. That's two cents less than what Wall Street expected them to lose, and eight cents better than the whisper. Believe it or not, that's actually good news. And of course, if we flip over to Yahoo Finance, there it is in the flesh, up almost $2.80 after market. That sounds great, but it's just enough to recover from the losses on Monday and Tuesday. On Robinhood, this vertical line puts me back over 3,600 bucks. My covered call at the $33 strike is probably not in play, so I'll likely take gains there. But I do have to admit, I am very skeptical that this bounce will hold. There's really no tangibly good news here, and I just made this TikTok so I could tell other people I think this earnings is garbage. I'm not the best TikToker, but it's a work in progress. 
People on Discord and Wall Street Bets right now are talking about this unspecified partnership with FTX. If this were a really good deal, they probably would have revealed some more details. Instead, all we get is that GameStop is going to try to introduce more people to crypto. My guess is that FTX is going to hold NFTs for people who buy them on GameStop's platform. That's it. I hope it's more than that, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. I'm going to let this run through the end of the week since this is a not horrific earnings and it could lead to another leg up, but I'll be ready to jump ship if this doesn't take up a few notches. It's 7.45 in the morning on Friday, and so far GameStop has yet to get back to those aftermarket prices from Wednesday, but it does look like we're going to open green today, so that's good news. I'm on the fence about what to do here, because on the one hand, the stock has no fundamental reason to rise. But when I look at the technicals, they're actually pretty good. RSI is bouncing up out of oversold territory, and the last time it did this, the stock made a great run back to the mid-30s, so that's bullish. Candlesticks have shown this strong decline right up until earnings and then bounced, so this could be a reversal if it sticks. We'll wait for more candles. And MACD is the one that I care about the most. The MACD line is finally not completely dumping versus the signal line. It looks like it's starting to flatten and that could potentially lead to a hook back up over the next week, which would indicate buying momentum is returning. This is pretty light on the bullish side, but I think it actually is a little bit bullish. To the extent that technical indicators matter on meme stocks, I think another week of wheeling is in order. Unless something crazy happens during market hours, I will probably let this week's covered call expire worthless and do another one next week. I've also got cash on tap that I can use for spreads next week. Let's let the day do its thing and we'll check back in later and see if I've changed my mind. I got pretty caught up during market hours, but you better believe that my eyes were glued on this huge upswing whenever I got the chance. Now that we've finally had a good day, my account is back up to 3,822 again on this big 9.2% up day. That'll round me out a little under 11% for the week and make up for the big losses in the last two weeks. I decided to hold GameStop a little bit longer based mostly on those indicators I talked about this morning, and I'm really glad I made that decision. GameStop is up over 11% on the day with just a couple of down ticks through market hours. Right on through to power hour, it ended on the high. The technicals on GameStop look much better than they did this morning, and I think we've got some room to run until we meet these moving averages again, up near my assigned price at 33. Although I was a little bit skeptical after seeing the earnings report, I'm actually really happy with the way this turned out. Now I want to take this momentum and roll it right into next week. So to recap and look at the way ahead, my realized gain for the week is just $32 from the covered call, which I will reinvest into more QILG as usual. And despite some positive movement today, I'm still bag holding GameStop shares assigned at $33. If we subtract the $437 I got from wheeling this thing since July 22nd, and then add back the $70 I reinvested into GameStop shares, then my actual basis is around 29.33. That's lower than I thought it would be, so I'm glad I did this math. In fact, that's really not that far from GameStop's current price, so this ended up being okay. Going into next week, I'll use the premium from this week's winnings to add about a share and a half of QILG. I'll wheel GameStop at least one more time after all, and then I'll use some of this growing cash pile for probably either credit spreads or iron condors. We'll see what the market does when it opens next week. I'm having a fun time with this season of the challenge. I hope you guys are having fun watching. Don't hesitate to join our Discord. It's 100% free, and I will see you guys in the next episode.